boom. Coming in hot, Jakey. What's up, brother? I like the variation. Good variation on the boom. <laughs> That's like when Malar used to do the got him, got him, yeah. him. And then he, he, he did it so much that they just recorded a pre-recorded got him because he was so sick of yeah. doing it. Um, so good. Hey, dude, dude, I got I got a, I got a surprise for us right off the gates. Oh, okay. Right out the gates. You did not tell. All me right, ready? This. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you. Just got him today. Hang on. Mm-hmm. We got new hats. The mayor's office hats, baby. You like them, wow. Travis Matthews too. Dude, the Travis Medic. Oh, that's that like soft. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm, I'll send. I'm gonna send a couple out to you. Please give do. one to Maddie too. Oh no, I'll give one to Matt. I'll give one to Matt at uh, at, at work. But you, Jess, I'll send one. Get get one for your dad. Let's go. All right, bro. I love you. Real nice. Nice. Real nice. So, hey, we're not. So, dude, we got to start selling our selling our stuff. I will it, do, do we, it. We, we got good shirts and hats. Have it shipped here, and I'll do it. I'll do it. I will promise. I'll do it. I will. Like Coriella. My Coriella, he's like, what are we, like, a freaking merchandise guy? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm answering guys. He's like, bro, I'm not a, what do you say? I'm not customer service here. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, dude, I told you I was playing softball last night. I haven't mm-hmm. done anything that athletic in, like, years. And, of course, what do I do? Liner in a gap. And I have to run out a triple. I thought I was going to have a, a go into direct cardiac arrest on third base last <laughs> night. I haven't, I haven't been chased in years. <laughs> I, it's I, like I, riding a bike, though, bro. You shot one in the gap, boom. No, it did feel good. It did feel good to get the little stroke going again. It was, dude, it was I'm, fun. I'm, more, I'm more worried about blowing out a hammy. Like, I don't, I don't need that. At this stage of my life, dude, I just don't. I, I just, I want to be healthy. I don't want to, like, I was concerned about the same thing. I was concerned. I, I, I don't want to do, like, an ACL, MCL thing either. Oh, dude, no, 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 no. At our age, bro, the Achilles. Oh, for you don't want to bra out the Achilles. That's apparently the wor- one of the worst pains you could ever experience as a human. Yeah. Dude, I, I got a buddy of mine. It's my buddy Joe Brazacchio. Mm. Just blew out his sec- other Achilles. Blown out both of them now. He did it the other day. Just He said oh. he was like playing uh, <clears throat> playing in a um, fa- father-student uh, game. You know, the fathers oh, versus the see. kids in like – Come in and, hey, end of the year basketball. He's yeah. like, you know, his kids are like little too. Like he goes to, he said he wasn't even playing hard. Achilles gone. No, see, I don't want that to happen. That'll be horrible. That would be yeah, horrible. All right, knock dude, on I, I, Dude, I broke, I broke my finger taking my pants off. <laughs> I don't need to be put. I know. I know. You move a certain way. You sneeze a certain way. Sneezes are scary these days. You know, the older you get. Yeah. You do a wrong sneeze, yeah. your whole back can, can, can contort like in, exactly. like in the ring. Uh, exactly. Hey, speaking of the ring, scary stuff, dude. Mookie Betts had opted out of what is it, the Fister Hotel? The Fister Hotel, in Milwaukee. Dude. Dan, I've stayed as, there so many times. As Dan, so P- many as Dan times. Plesak would say, Fister, damn near killed her. <laughs> <laughs> he used to, he'd be like, "Can I please say that in the air?" And we'd be like, "No, you can't say that in the air." Anyway, yeah, you can always say something. Okay, once. Okay, so now he opted out. He says he's not afraid of ghosts. He says he's uh, he doesn't believe in that stuff, but whenever he stayed there, every time he hears a noise, he's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, and he never gets to sleep. So he stayed in an Airbnb with his friends. He only went two for 12 in a series, so maybe he was partying a little harder. Maybe he should get back, get back into the uh, yeah. fister. Now, there's stories. There's a million stories. Bryce Harper told a story about how he puts his clothes out at night for the next day, and he woke up the next morning, swears on his life that his clothes were all on a floor, and the table they were on was on the other side of the room. Swears... Soup to nuts. Now that's just one story. There's a million stories, but you have, you have stayed in this hotel. I, Bro, I need, the, I need this, the story. This is where we, when you play the Brewers, you stay yeah. at the Fister, right? And like, there's two sides of the Fister. There's an older side that we. That's where we think it's. That's where it's haunted. It's the older side of the Fister. I remember. I mean, Austin Kearns came in one day, and I think he said he might have, you know, had an encounter with a, <laughs> with a ghost one night when he was sleeping. Seriously? I can't remember. Dude, I can't remember the story. No doubt, though. Currency came in the next day. He's like, dude, that place is haunted. Like, you I, need no te- doubt. Was- text him today and finish that story tomorrow. But, dude, what was right, it? I got I you- to text him. Yeah, Were I got to find out. I, never, I remember. I'm pretty sure it was Currency <laughs> did something happen at the Fister. But, okay. anyway, and dude, no doubt there's stuff going on at the Fister. People, there's too many things have happened to guys at the Fister. That's the first thing. Dude, listen to this. This is this story I have from the Fister. So the Fister's always like, 
for whatever reason, it's like it has, you know, it's known for like the ghosts and stuff like that. This one night, dude, like we go out, you know, we got done playing against the Brewers. We're down at the hotel bar having a couple pops to come back up to go to go to my room. I can't get the, these two huge bodyguards are there. And I'm trying to get to my room and they're like, uh, this section of the hotel is closed. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, Louis Farrakhan is staying here. <laughs> I swear to God. Meanwhile, I'm like, wow, did I see many Budweiser's or something? Like, am I dreaming? Like, what's going on? I was just in my room. Where go? So, dude, Louis Farrakhan was in town for like, like a, I don't know what, but he had bodyguards at each end of the hallway. And my room was like two down from Louis Farrakhan, but the bodyguards wouldn't let me down the hall. So what did you do? Well, I finally was like, hey, listen, guys, like, I know Louis, <laughs> Louis Farrakhan's here, but did you rent the whole hotel? Because I want to go to bed. <laughs> I got a baseball game tomorrow. I got to play. <laughs> Face of Ben Sheets. Farrakhan's going to give a speech in Midtown tomorrow. Yeah. You got, you got to, well, right. Ben Sheets is throwing cutters inside your hands tomorrow. Listen, Dude, I'm, like, yeah, I'm like, Ben Sheets is throwing 100 tomorrow. <laughs> Can Louis Farrakhan hit that guy? <laughs> Holy cow, this story took a turn, man. Holy cow. <laughs> this is why Sean Casey has the greatest stories. This is why we started this show. We went from ghosts in a hotel room to getting boxed out by Louis Farrakhan's bodyguards. That's an unbelievable story. It's an oh, incredible, dude. And it was like, it was it was getting, heat, not heated, but I was like, well, obviously I'm not going to, these guys will kill me in two seconds, but I do want to go to bed. That's So I had to like talk my way into getting to my room. I don't have very many stories like that. You live in that world. I have one story. I got one story, actually. I'll tell you this real quick. Um, yeah. So you know who Dick Cavett is, right? He was like a yeah. big-time famous guy back in his 70s, yeah. 80s. He had talk shows, had the Beatles on with him, whatever. So this one summer, we were out on vacation in, like, the Montauk area. And Hurricane, I think it was Hurricane Bob. Hurricane Bob comes and hits. And so ah, the entire... Sorry. The, no, it just sounds funny. <laughs> what? Hurricane Bob? Hurricane Bob, yeah. <laughs> that was a big one. That was a big one. I have a t-shirt still that says, I survived Hurricane Bob in Hampton. <laughs> I just swear to God. So they they send everybody to the East Hampton gym, gymnasium. And I'm talking right. about, and now you're in like, this is like East Hampton, Amagant, and Montauk. So there's like Christy Brinkley was in there. Uh, like all the big celebrities. I think Billy Joel they were divorced, but they were both in there. Like it was a big, everybody was <laughs> so there. A and so yeah. somebody goes, and my mom used to love being like part of like the recovery, like any kind of process. Like whenever we go to war, there was, there was yellow flags on her car, you know, the purple flags on the, on the trees. Let's go. Yeah. And she would put like a bandana on and like, like get to work with all, any kind of travesty. <laughs> she loved it. I don't know why, but so somebody goes, does anybody, is anybody here a doctor? We need doctors, you know, to be like on call. There were like pregnant women in there, whatever. My father turns to my mother and goes, don't. And my mother goes, my husband's a doctor. And he's like, God damn it, Joanne. Because, <laughs> because like now he's like, now he's on the hook, you know? <laughs> and God forbid, what if something happens? He wrongly helps somebody. Like he was so mad, but he goes, all right, I will do this on one condition. This place was packed. Like, there were hundreds and hundreds, almost like a thousand people in this gym. <laughs> he made them block. My dad goes, if I'm going to be the doctor, I need space. So he like, made them block out of space where he took, like, a whole, we had a whole beach blanket. You know, the really big yeah. square ones? Blocked out the blanket. He made them put ropes around. <laughs> and so my dad's sitting there in, like, a lounge chair reading the newspaper as the doctor. Now, fast forward. Dick Cavett walks up to my dad randomly and he goes, uh, hey doc, I got a question for you. And my father turns, he goes, what, what, what can I do? Are you all right? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I got a gazebo in my yard. You think this hurricane's going to screw it up? And my dad goes, what the bleep are you talking about, Dick? I'm a <laughs> doctor. I'm not, <laughs> not a carpenter. I'm not a I'm carpenter. Not a carpenter. <laughs> yeah. That's my one weird story like that. That's my Wait, Louis did, did he know who Dick Cavett was? Of course he did. Yeah, I mean, that's like my dad's generation. That's, he was like kind of like the Conan O'Brien of his of his dad. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh my god. Uh, dude, I got one more quick one more quick story. Please tell. Dude, speaking of speaking of just like randomly going in like Louis Farrakhan, I, I in uh when I was in I want to say it was 2002, I was going to get my shoulder checked out in uh well, anyway, I got injured in a game, and I had to go with Mark Mann, our trainer, to out to um to get an MRI. 
right? And I go out to the car to get, get in the MRI, and Sidney Poitier was the only guy in this park. It was the most random thing ever. And I don't know why I think of that now, but Sidney Poitier. So I'm like, and I like, you know, dude, he's a guy that's like, you dude, know, he's a legend. Very distinct looking, just oh, a yeah. good looking dude. Handsome yeah. fellow. Dude, I was like, hi, Mr. Poitier. You know, he had no Man. idea who I was, obviously. But we were like, we were. he was getting out of his car. I was getting in a car. We were the only two cars in this, uh, right outside Dodger Stadium. He must what? have been going in or something. And it was just a kind of a funny interaction with Sidney Poitier. I met him one time. He obviously didn't meet dude, me. But I I'm know, like, but dude, that's why he's one of my favorite I'll actors. I'll never forget that. You I'll never s- forget it. Dude. You ever see the movie Shoot to Kill with him and Tom Berenger? No. Sean, Good movie. can you please watch it tonight? I swear. I will. Bro. No, dude, I'm, I'm not kidding. 1998 action thriller. I'm looking up. Sidney Poitier, Tom Berenger. Kirstie Alley. Okay. It's about, I'll just give you like a super quick synopsis. Tom Berenger kind of like uh, handles like, you know, when you go up into the mountains or you go to like one of those huge parks and you can do all the trails and whatever. Yeah. He was kind of <clears> like <throat> one of those guys, you know, like that he'd take you up the side of a mountain and whatever in like Montana, whatever kind of thing. Poitier was a, a cop. There's some crap going on. There's some bad people around. And Kirstie Alley is out on this, this like, you know, this trip and these guys, I don't know if they escape from prison or whatever's going on, but they wind up, he figures out that they are probably in this forest thing, whatever. So Poitier, am I saying it right? Sidney Poitier? Yeah, Sidney Poitier. Him and Tom <clears throat> Berenger, who's amazing, they have to like, they have to hook up. So like Berenger has to be like, kind of like the, the hunter for Poitier who's trying to find these bad guys in the woods. Dude, it is one of the best movies I've ever seen. I, I'm, I'm putting it in the top 20 right now. You got to watch it. You Are you serious? It. All right, I'll, I'll watch Dude, it. Dude, it's I'll action. It. It's a little scary. It's cool. It's funny. It. Shoot the thrill. Shoot, Shoot the to kill. kill. Shoot the kill. Shoot the thrill. That sounds like Shoot a, the thrill. a club. Oh, Shoot the thrill. thrill. I'm going to be listening to that today when I'm lifting. Yeah. Shoot the kill. Play the kill. Too many women and too many people. <laughs> so good. All right. All right. Now All right, let's, let's talk about baseball. baseball. Okay, let's start with Kenley Jansen. 400 saves. One of only seven men in history and people in general. He's seven. Dude, you got to give Kenley Jansen a ton of credit, man. His guy has had an incredible career. He, you know, obviously most of it with the Dodgers was a former catcher, dude. Right. From the and Netherlands. Turn, turn pitcher, yeah. And, like, he's had an unbelievable 400 saves is a ton of saves, man. That is not easy to do, man. Mm-hmm. Closers are different, a different, uh, you know, a different breed. The way they can close the game out, get their heartbeat down. But, you know, don't overlook 400 saves. That's a big deal. No. Trevor Hoffman, Mariano Rivera. Lee Smith is third. Hard. It goes Mariano, Hoffman, Lee Smith, 478, by the way. Don't sleep on big Lee Smith. Wow. K-Rod. Lee Smith, all, all, all of them are in Cooperstown. Are they all? Is Lee Smith in them? Yes. Okay. Lee Smith got in a couple years ago. Okay. Next on the list, I don't even know if he's up. I don't know if he's been up yet. K-Rod. I think K-Rod's... Hasn't even been on his first year on a ballot because we would have been I'm, talking I'm a, about him. Yeah, right? yeah, K Rod. Oh, yeah, K Rod's off the ballot, I think. Is he? 400. Or maybe he's still on it, but he's still on it. But John Franco, 424. Billy Wagner, yep. 422. Kenley is past Craig Kimbrell. You think about how long Craig Kimbrell was a great wow. closer, and Kenley has more than him in less time. 400 wow. saves, man. And hey, you, you say I got out of heart. I mean, he's been doing this with a heart problem his entire career. Yeah. Remember, he couldn't play in he couldn't pitch yeah. in Colorado. I still don't know if he could pitch in Colorado if he yeah. had to. We're, we're good for him. Boston should be happy to have him right now. You know, I mean, good Boston's off. playing good ball. Yeah, it's awesome. They are playing good ball. Hey, another guy, another uh, old guard guy, Justin Verlander, came out firing yeah. a little bit. <clears throat> Neat, much needed victory for the Met- Metropolitans. Take on punched that. out seven. Looked good, man. He looked really good. Uh, they, the Mets need him to be Justin Verlander right now. You know, right now with Scherzer kind of banged up, not having a great year. Yeah. You know, McGill's not having a great year. I mean, that that that, that pitching is is uh, stretched right it's now. It's stretched. And like you said, you said it yesterday. You made a good point. They had veteran guys who could just hang, help them hang in there last year that they don't have on a mound this year, yeah. the Mets. Yeah. So the other side of town, Volpe with a grand slam, first of his career. How many grand, grand slams did you hit in your career? Can you believe it? I had 130 home runs, no grand slams. Really? How many times were you up with the bases loaded, do you think? 
I, I think my 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 average of the base load was like three fifty or something. I was no, yeah, raking. Yeah, dude, I can't tell you how many times I hit bullets off the like. I'll never forget. I hit a, a bases loaded against Levon Hernandez in San Fran. I hit a rocket to right. Anywhere else, it's gone. It hits the freaking brick at the top of the brick. You know how oh, high that wall is. No. In San Fran, bounces back, unbelievable. Then one other time, I remember in I'm with these no two other times. You remember these things? Mm-hmm. Three other times. Okay. One, my rookie year, I hit a bullet off the top of the wall against the Marlins. Um, with the when I was with the Tigers in 07, uh, George Sherrill left. He came in to face me. I hit a bullet off him to right. And once again, high wall and 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 uh in the or with the Baltimore, boom! It's the top of the top of the wall. Oh. Back in, yeah. And then, um, and then against Kurt Schilling, this is the one that bothers me the most. <laughs> I'm with the Reds in 05, facing Schilling, bases loaded. He throws me a cutter. I, Chinch, to this day, it's one of the highest and furthest balls I've ever had. Crushed. And, dude, I'm like, there it is. There's my first grand slam, you know, because it's over. And then I crush it to right. J.D. Drew goes back, and he's back. He's back to the wall. And he, like... His back's against the wall, and the ball, the wind was blowing in in Boston, howling in, bro. Yeah. The ball literally got, it like, it almost hit a wall. It, like, got to the top. It came straight down to J.D. Drew. Oh. Like, boom, into his throat. Dude, I came out my next to bat, and Veritek, like, first thing he said to me, he goes, you crushed that, didn't you? He goes, you crushed that ball. I go, dude, I, I, I can't hit a ball harder and further uh. than that ball. He goes, yeah, the wind, when the wind gets it, you know, I, I wanted to cry. That's terrible. <laughs> no, I'm really upset so far, about it. That's terrible. Have you, uh, were you ever so robbed big. of a homer? Did anybody ever go over the wall and take a ball? Uh, yeah, I think I've been robbed a couple of times. I can't remember by who, but yeah, yeah, I think I've been robbed. Nobody was better than Tory Hunter at that, man. Remember? It's the worst feeling, though. When you get robbed of a homer, you like you want to throw up. Yeah. On the, dude, one time. So, how about this? One time, we're facing the um, San Diego Padres. Jarrett Wright comes in, who I came up in the minors with Jarrett. So, we right. always kind of had this thing. Like, we both came up with Cleveland. So I'm facing Jared. He's closing this game out, dude. I hit a bullet in the gap to end the game. I'm bases loaded. I'm like, I'm getting a, I'm ripping one here. I get up, wham, hit an absolute rocket. Pitch. It goes over the second base net. I mean, it's it's a bullet, but it's like it won't get down. I hit it so hard it won't get down. I'm like, get uh, down, no. get down, dude. As I'm running to first, Mark Kotze, uh. who was incredible out there. Full out die. Like, oh, no, no cook dies. Oh, yeah, dude. Catch the ball. I'm running to first. And as he catches it, I'm so sick to my stomach because I think it's a game winner. Yes. I mean, it's a bullet. It's a liner. Yeah. It's in the gap. It, it just won't get down. It's like still back spinning. I'm like, <laughs> sit. Get in the freaking hit the grass. <laughs> but I didn't even think Kotsi would get Dude, he catches it. Chicks. I lay on the ground like, like, I, like I was shot. Uh. Like I laid down. And then I realized, what the hell am I doing? I was like, we got a ball game going on here. Oh. Now, now we're going to extra innings, and oh. I'm laying on the ground, face down on the grass. Just brought, caught, and caught the ball. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. That's hysterical. Yeah, because in that moment, you just think, like, oh, the game is over. And you yeah. still in your head was like, the game's over, and I didn't win it. But the game is still going on. That's yeah. great. Yeah, oh, painful, dude. Oh, painful. Boy. All right. Um, you got to run soon. One real quick thing. We have an apology. We, we give our apologies on this thing, right, all the time. Oh, yeah. Our apology goes to a certain Detroit Tiger right now. Well, we we did we did crush Hoppy Baez a couple weeks ago, <laughs> and we we weren't the only people that were thinking that way because AJ Hinch ended up ended up benching him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know what? Sometimes you gotta light that fire under people, right, Chinch? Yes. They sir. lit the fire. He has been since he got benched. He's now he's the guy that they signed to the big deal. He's been coming go. out playing great defense, hitting home runs, driving in runs, game winning hits. I mean. And look at the Tigers now, dude. Uh, dude, Baez right is there. all of a sudden hot. The Tigers are Couple on the run. Out. Yeah. Hey, I'd like to think that maybe Javi Baez is a devout listener to the Mayor's Office podcast, and he felt like he disappointed us, and he's like, you know what? This is the last straw. I, if these guys are upset with me, I got to turn it around. So I think he's that's like, what happened. It, it, is that what happened? If Kitch is talking shit on me, I got to get this going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Javi Baez could probably throw me through a roof if he wants. <laughs> Although I'm pretty scrap, I don't know. We're kind of the same size. No, he would take me He'd probably kill. No, me. no, he'd kill you. I'd like to see. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see John Dennis use you for the keg toss one time. I, I do. He did. We did. He he even he even offered. He's like, I'll throw you, Jinch. I was like, okay, throw me as far as you want. 
<laughs> that would. I wonder how far he could throw me. Probably pretty far. It's like those oh. those wrestlers. They don't do that anymore. The, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You like can't even get in there. three, the three small, really small the bowling wrestlers. or bowling against no. You're dude, when they do against Andre the Giant, I used to think it was the greatest thing when I was like <laughs> nineteen eighty six. I'm twelve. I'm like, Dad, they got five little dudes against Andre the Giant, and he's just throwing them around like they're freaking duck pin bowling. <laughs> All right, we digress. All right. Get uh, after it. You're a busy day today. So do you I. You know, you know what? I, real, real quick, before I do, I got to go. But one, one more thing. The other night, I'm like, I like to go to bed early, but I'm on the road at MLB Network. And all of a sudden, I go down the Ric Flair rabbit hole of oh. like watching Ric Flair and Joe Rogan. There was like a, he was on his podcast recently. It was really, really good. So uh-huh. I don't even know why I brought that up right now. It really makes no sense. Because you mentioned the Andre the Giant. Oh, yeah. Andre the Giant. Wrestling. Exactly. Yeah. Real, real quick, I saw a picture of Andre the Giant with uh, Fred Savage because you remember they were in a Princess Bride together. Yeah, I read this article. I don't know how this happened. Fred Savage there's a picture of Fred Savage on Andre the Giant's like leg, you know, like Santa Claus. Yeah, he, he was like this big with it when he was a kid. And Fred Savage wrote this whole thing saying uh, he was a huge WWF fan when he was like you know eight years old, and he was in that movie. And- right. They never had scenes together. Andre the Giant showed up and surprised Fred Savage on his very last day. Uh, of shooting of the Princess Bride, and then Fred Savage said every year f- until the day until the year he died, Andre the Giant would send him a personalized Christmas card. Fred Savage. No way. Yeah, and they were like That's really cool. good friends. Isn't that crazy? That's incredible. They said Andre is an incredible guy. One yeah. one other thing they said. One of my buddies was telling me back in the day when when Andre would stay at a hotel, the WWE would 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 pay like five hundred dollars so Andre could drop. You know, drop a bomb in the tub. Oh. <laughs> Is that a fact? Because he couldn't, dude. He couldn't fit on the toilets. Oh. So if he had to drop a growler, he would he have to go in the tub, and they they would pay five hundred dollars for. Or, oh my! Yeah, that's what I heard. Hey, no be- uh, we, no we digress. Way, no we better, digress on that one. No better way to end the show than that one. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, buddy. We're back at right, it brother. tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Yep. It's almost uh, the weekend. See you tomorrow, man. All right, bro. Yep. Love you, buddy. Hey, thanks for everybody for listening. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Manana. See you, buddy. <laughs>